think I have much more to say. I will invite the amazing Yasmin Williams of Impression, who's the paid media lead. Where are her colleagues? Come on, give the support here. Yeah, we can. I'm Yasmin, I'm here to talk to you today about using third party insights within your EPC strategy. Um, I guess like a quick intro to me, I've been doing this probably five, six years now. Um, the entire time I've been agency side, so quite a bit of experience across you know a number of different verticals. Um, and I'm working at Impression, um, so we're a London and Nottingham based agency. We're based just by Borough Market, so if anyone ever wants to come say hi, eat some very overpriced food, I'm very on for it. Um, so I had a friend who text me probably 20 minutes ago being like, don't forget to open what you're doing, like a, a fact that's really going to grip the audience, or like a stat that's going to get everyone going. Literally the only one that I can think of is that, um, so when tiger sharks are in the womb, they... <laughs> <laughs> all have like a gladiator type battle and one tiger shark eats all of its siblings and then that's the tiger shark that's born. That is legit as well, like I'm not kidding. I hope you're ripped. It's gonna get less exciting for this moment. Um, so, I guess the first thing that I always like to do about is like, what's the point of kind of discussing this? Um, I think, and this is the only time that I will say this, obviously, the computer's dying. Um, according to yesterday's news, a bit later than we thought, but it is going to go at some point. Definitely our first party data is kind of the most important asset that we have at the moment, but I think it's really, really important that we're able to kind of consult multiple data points um, and have different kind of sources for the things that we're trying in our campaigns. Everyone kind of used to seeing slides like this at the moment. So I feel like those of us that probably work in agencies are presenting slides like this a lot at the moment and are kind of showcasing consumer confidence at an all-time low. Obviously, it's like a pretty difficult time to be working in PPC at the moment, particularly working in e-commerce. You know, consumer confidence is low, markets are shrinking in a number of ways. This is a really, really important insight to be able to deliver. I don't think this is the be-all and end-all of what we can say, though. And I think it's really important that we... So I think that we often use these kind of insights like as the last port of call and we go, things are not going well for us at the moment. What can we find to support the fact that, you know, performance is down, et cetera. So what I want to move away from is searching for insights that kind of fit your narrative and having that as the last point of call in campaign management and actually moving towards using insights really regularly, getting kind of stuck into them in our day-to-day -day account management and how we're running campaigns um, and have these form part of our strategy. Last point before I go into the actual meat of this presentation. Um, I think it's really important to define what action makes it useful insight as well, because there's lots of garbage on there. <laughs> as we kind of discussed then, contextualizing your performance like that, um, consumer confidence insight, really, really important. But I don't think it's enough to say like, oh, this is this is proof that we're doing everything that we can at the moment. I want to get to the point where we can say, here's an insight, yes, this is the context, but also what decision can we make off the back of it? What is the opportunity off the back of it? And that's going to frame what this session is. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take you through the different tools that I kind of use on a day-to-day -day basis, how I use them, some tips and tricks to get the most out of them. Um, some of them, maybe all of them, will be things that you're using quite a lot at the moment. Hopefully, you'll get something new from this presentation, though, that will show you like a new way that you can be deriving insight. I'm going to start with the things that you're probably using most often and probably the simplest tool, and then we'll move on to the more... Um, out there, examples afterwards. So first and foremost, who's using Google Trends at the moment? Yeah, everyone familiar with the functionality? I think this is like obviously one of the most powerful tools that we can be using as search marketers, it's all search data. If we go back to that kind of framework that I discussed earlier, using Google Trends data, you can, you can do all of these things. Um, I think we probably fall into the category here of using it most often to contextualize performance, obviously using like search indexing to say, you know, brand demand is down year on year, etc. There's a lot more insight that you can derive from this platform, such as this. Mm. So there is going to be some quizzing throughout this, so I'm going to need like a show of hands involvement. <laughs> so this is an insight that I got from Google Trends. So in 2004, one of these three people was the most searchable male celebrity, specifically on Google Images. 
So Eminem, Orlando Bloom, or Usher. So we're going to raise hands for who you think was the most successful celebrity. So please, and then look around. Please raise your hands if you think it was Eminem. Okay. A really strong raise hand over there as well. If you think it was Orlando Bloom. Okay. If you think it was Usher. Okay. <laughs> so the answer was Orlando Bloom. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, it's from 2003, last Lord of the Rings movie, the last parts of the Caribbean movie. You forget, he was like the it guy of that era. Don't really know what's happened since, but he was it. In my eyes, should have been Usher, though. <laughs> um, not necessarily the most relevant insight for us, but I'm sure everyone's used to seeing pages like this on Google Trends. So the example that I'm going to use is for an um, electrical appliances retailer that we work with regularly. So we kind of consult these sort of insights very regularly. So obviously looking at washing machine trends, um, nothing particularly out of the ordinary there. I think this graph is useful when it comes to brand demand, bits and pieces like that. But when we're looking at kind of category level insights like aircon last week really spiked, I didn't need Google Trends to tell me that. What is more useful is scrolling down to this section, which again, are people familiar with? Yeah, some of us. Yeah. Um, so for this client specifically, looking at the related topics and related queries, we found in March this year that there was a lot more searches coming through for energy efficiency, um, when's the cheapest time to run this item, etc. What we did from that is came up with like a bespoke strategy for them which um, we sort of said there's data to prove that these kind of queries are, are increasing at the moment. It's at the front of the consumer mindset, sorry. So we started bidding on energy efficiency terms. We updated the feed as well to show like the energy rating earlier on in the title if that was relevant. Um, and we also, through SA360 inventory management, started putting in energy efficiency into ad copy as well. I won't read the results, but obviously a lot of incremental volume came through this activity and this was just from like one Google trend search as well so really really powerful way of using that insight. Does anyone ever visit the sidebar on Google Trends? No I didn't used to either but actually there is like a lot that you can get from it obviously the kind of trending searches that we see related to a specific query probably the most important thing that we can use actually this can be really useful when you've got questions internally from stakeholders or from clients who are saying, oh my God, performance, like yesterday was a Wednesday, normally it performed so well, but for some reason it didn't, what's going on? If you kind of go into your campaigns, say nothing's gone awry, what, what can I spot? Trending searching is probably the best next port of call. And I had this a lot from clients yesterday, England versus Sweden, she said. Um, and we found that during the men's Euros last year, every time there was a match on, intent dropped quite a lot. And I found this for a few clients recently. Really useful insight. Um, what we've been able to do off the back of this is not just contextual, say it's the final one, so back of it. Actually, we've looked back at when the Premier League started last year, did intent drop again. Actually, we've made some budgetary decisions behind this. So a lot more ways that you can be using this feature. And then the other one that you can get here is the year in search feature, where, which is where I've got the Orlando Bloom insight. So you can actually see the most searchable terms right back until 2001, which 2001 isn't that relevant, but interesting. Haven't thought about Nostradamus since I was maybe seven. <laughs> thought it was going to be a much bigger part of my life. Um, MP3 music services, also weird. But <laughs> what is... Probably more important is when you look at this in the context of like 2019, we get a lot of clients coming to us saying, how do we emulate the performance that we had then? Things aren't going as well for us as they did in that era. So we can look back and say, what was front of consumer mindset during that period? What's different about it now? How do we need to speak to people differently? And you can derive a lot of insight from that. Anyone here using Glimpse? Okay, so this is a, a really useful thing that I'd recommend everyone download. Um, so Glimpse is a Chrome extension, and this basically will really enhance how you can use Google Trends. So the free version and the paid for version. What it does is it can show you. Does it come up? I'll just be loud. Um, it can show you sort of actual search volumes on the searches that you're looking at. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how 
how accurate they are, but um, looking backwards in Keyword Planner, they, they do seem to be in the realm. More importantly, they show you kind of questions afterwards that people are searching related to that term specifically, which can be really, really useful for some clients. We've gone in and started bidding on these questions or create content around them. So um, very useful. You get, if you use a free version, 10 free searches a month. So you do have to use them wisely, but you can pick when you use them. And um, there is a paid for version where you can get it unlimited, basically. Um, so yeah, I'm going to finish everything with kind of reasons to care on each tool. I think with Google Trends, basically, it's one of the most powerful tools we can use. Actual search trends, you can spot real time trends that are going on, and it's really useful for seasonality budgeting. I don't really see a reason not to be using this tool. So if you're not already, I would really recommend you more for them. Um, the next one that I'm going to go on to, again, is one that hopefully people are using at the moment. Has everyone got Google Alerts set up? Yeah. So I'd imagine that a lot of the ways that people are using this is to kind of monitor brand terms and see if there's any like articles published that are related to specific brands that you're working with, um, any competitor brands as well. A few knots at the moment. Um, I actually think this is probably one of the more powerful tools that we can use. We have to have it set up correctly in order to do so. Is this working? Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Um, so it's really useful for contextualizing performance. You can make decisions off the back of it. I don't necessarily think it always allows you to kind of look for an opportunity. Occasionally there will be a gem that you'll see. Um, but what I think it's most useful for is brand safety. And this is the way that I've used it the most. So anytime that I am working with a new client, the question I'll always ask myself is, what could impact a consumer's opinion of the brand that I'm working with? So things that at a minimum, I think you should be monitoring, brand name, competitor name, something that I imagine that most people are doing at the moment. Um, if you know there's some negative reviews for the brand, what do you need to be doing off the back of that? If the competitor has really nice negative reviews, can you kind of Capitalize on that as well in a much way. Um, items as well, if you're selling products, your key products, you should absolutely be monitoring at all times as well. If there are negative reviews, do you need to pull back on that activity? If there are really positive reviews for something going on, um, is there a way that you can capitalize? For the electrical appliances retailer, we, we kind of bid on PS5 terms because they stock it when it's available. Um, we found that because of match types, we were matching to PS5 updates, and there was a point where like, a new update came out and we were wasting a lot of spend on it, but Google Alerts would allow us to kind of know that that's going on and we could mitigate that. This is kind of a niche one, um, but so we work with quite a few skincare brands at Impression, and a lot of them, their USPs are like the ingredients that they're using on them. Important to monitor because sometimes ingredients can suddenly get a bad review and there'll be a reason that people are like, actually, you shouldn't be using this ingredient on your skin. So we use ingredients like in our coffee as well. Really important to be monitoring that and make sure that you're not causing a bit of like a, a brand safety peril. And then last one, not relevant to all brands, but definitely relevant to some, is if you've got any like celebrity endorsements or influencer associates or anything like that. Um, the example that I always use for this, so this is going back a few years, I used to work for, or one of my clients was like a popular streaming service in the UK, and one of the shows that they had on was a show that has the Kardashians on it, and <laughs> to my absolute horror one day, I woke up and um, Tristan had cheated on Chloe with Jordan as well, which is god awful, <laughs> and... <laughs> What I didn't realise, like as upset about that generally as I was, was got into work and actually, because we're behind in the UK, those people were searching for the show name because they were like, oh, have people seen it on the show or when are we going to be able to see it? Wasted absolutely loads of spend on that. So off the back of it, we set up Google alerts on all of the Kardashians' names and everyone that's associated with them, which meant that like, every time that Tristan has cheated since, we were able to <laughs> like, any spend there. Um, so not relevant for everyone, but definitely worth calling out. Um, so what I wanted to do was pull up some of the best insights that I've got off of Google Alerts recently. This one's just one for fun, but monitoring skincare terms. A member of Take That is launching their own skincare brand. So we're going to do quizzing again. Do we think it's Robbie, Gary, or Mark? So I'll give you just a moment to think. So please raise your hands if you think Robbie is launching his own skincare brand. 
Okay. We think it's Gary. Okay. Mark. Interesting. There was more marks than I thought there would be, especially based on that picture. <laughs> but it is Robbie. Yeah. And it's called Hopium, which I hate. It's <laughs> really not good. Um, but yeah, he's breaking into that industry. Um, a bit more useful though. So we work with Top Styles, who bring them to start where it's like the market leading tile retailer in the UK. Loads of stuff like this has come through recently. Um, articles promoting how to get brand stains off the bathroom tiles, etc. So this has meant we've been able to brief into our digital PR team and um, content around this, and also we've briefed in some YouTube video content as well. So an opportunity to capitalize on. And then up kept their name out of it, but the electrical appliances retailer we spoke about earlier, they've had a competitor that's in a lot of trouble at the moment, and we were bidding on their name at the time. So this allowed us to stop bidding and make sure that we weren't wasting spend. So reason to care about this, um, main thing in my eyes is brand safety 100%, and occasionally you have a really fun article that will just brighten up your day at work. If you do look at it the other way, you get irrelevant articles sometimes as well that can take time out of your work day. Um, but also, it's not going to make a difference every single day, but occasionally you'll get something that's really going to help you out. Final Google one that I put in is Think with Google, and I put this in semi begrudgingly because I normally am not a fan, but recently it's helped me out quite a bit. So, are people familiar with Think with Google or using it? A few nods. So, this is, if you're not aware, this is um, Google's kind of consumer insights and consumer behavior platform. All the research that you get from here is from Google. So again, this is kind of a, a tool that you can be using that technically does all of these things. Um, occasionally, the insights that you can get or the recommendations are either obvious or not great. Um, so again, we're going back to our quiz. So two of the three recommendations that I've put up here are things that Google have recommended. One is one that I've made up. So I'll give you a moment to read, and we're going to decide which one's been made up. Who thinks number one is made up? Number two? Number three? A lot of people didn't answer that fact. Um, so the one that I made up was the third one. So Google do actually like article that's on their front page at the moment is saying like, make sure that your products are either undamaged and things like that, which obviously are semi obvious insights. Um, but you can also get absolute gems like this, and these are things that I've shown clients recently. Um, they've got quite a lot of content on there at the moment around kind of mitigating the impact of inflation for people, so showing that buy one get one free terms are on the rise, which we've got a, a few clients that um, serve or offer value products that they're able to offer buy one get one free on. Promo codes. Um, if you've got any beauty brands or anything like that, dupes is like a, a hugely important insight to be receiving and like a, a great opportunity to capitalize on. So you can occasionally get a gem, but sometimes you do have to trifle through some trash for it. Um, as, as I've said on this slide, and all, always worth bearing in mind that it's all from Google, so it is any bias. So, Final section that we're going to go on to is just like wider statistical insight. Show of hands, do people think that they're using statistical insight at all in their kind of campaign management? Yeah? Oh, nice, a few of you. Um, I think there's sometimes a little bit of a stigma here because it can take a while to find the insights that are, are, that are relevant to you. Um, what I'm going to run through is a few platforms that I use, all of which have free versions and paid for versions. Every insight that I've derived here is a, a free insight that I found. And oh no. um, these insights are, can be really, really powerful because having actually a third party source that isn't like Google or someone telling you what you should be doing. If you're going back to a client or to an internal stakeholder, actually having like a reputable source that's telling you you need to do something can often be a lot more powerful. And you can do all of these things. The ones that I'm going to go through are eMarketer. Statista and the Office for National Statistics, um, some of which give kind of industry specific insights, some of which is consumer behaviour. Um, obviously, the ONS is probably much broader insight, but you can find things that are relevant. So, I just put out one insight that I've seen on each of these recently. First of all, e marketer. So, this is a graph. So, I've, I've put in like how much time it's taken me to search for it as well, because I think often we do think like oh, I've got to troll through for hours. 
So I literally just searched brand loyalty on eMarketer and found this graph that shows that um, Gen Z users are less brand loyal than all other generations and examples of how that you could use this in campaign management. You can analyze your data and say, actually, we don't have people from Gen Z that are repeat purchasers. You might think, do we need to adopt an, a retention strategy for them and actually like really, really try hard to retain them? Or alternatively, we can accept the fact that we know they're not going to come back regularly. We can adopt an acquisition strategy instead and say, let's get them in once and that's good enough for us. Statista, so um, really simple insight. I just searched like online video trends here. And um, this is basically saying of online video platforms, how many minutes on average do UK users spend on them? We've got a few clients or a client specifically that I'm working with at the moment that is spending a lot on marketing on all four. And actually they refuse to work on YouTube at the moment because they're kind of saying, oh, we're giving Google all our money. Actually, an insight like this can say, well, you're missing out on a lot of pie. Everyone's on YouTube a lot more than they're on all four. So a really, really simple way to kind of get your stakeholders invested in YouTube. And this one, so I wanted to find like a industry specific insight as well. And again, going back a few years, I used to work with a supermarket and we used to on sort of a bi-weekly basis go on all of these websites and type in grocery trends. This is something that came up this week. Um, also like shocking data shows the average price of groceries, different products, how much it's increased or decreased over the last year. It passes up 50%, <laughs> outrageous. But we used to do a lot of like work on their recipe website for them. So there's a huge opportunity there to say, what can we be doing actually um, to speak to the fact that certain ingredients are much more expensive? What alternatives can we be offering and actually drive up a new online strategy for them? So really, really important. Um, most exciting insight that I found on this though is that countries, some countries a Big Mac is really, really expensive in. So one country, a Big Mac is the equivalent of seven US dollars, and I would like everyone to guess which one it is. Your options are Venezuela, Switzerland, and Canada. So I'll give you one moment, and then we're going to go. Okay, who thinks Venezuela? Okay. Switzerland? Okay. Canada? Right. It is Switzerland. Happiest nation on earth. Most expensive Big Mac. Make that make sense. Um, reasons to care on this section. So, as I've said, really, really powerful supporting insight and um, widely recognized, very repeatable sources of data. You can get really niche specific industry insight as well. Like I'd imagine everyone in this room, whatever industry that you're working with, you'll be able to find something that's relevant to you. Um, what is worth bearing in mind that you can really fall into the trap of being like, the thing that we said earlier about using it as your last port of call, using it to just try and contextualize your performance. Um, and if it's not there, it's not there. You might be trying to find the perfect insight for you. Don't, don't spend hours doing that. So to kind of wrap up this talk, what are you going to change? Hopefully, you'll be brought into the fact that we shouldn't just be searching insights to kind of fulfill our own narrative. Um, but actually, getting ingrained in insights on a day-to-day -day basis is really, really useful for driving your strategy. And if you take away three things, please make sure that the insights don't just contextualize your performance, but help you make a decision and look for a new opportunity. And that's me.